Recently, I've been thinking about what's the best way of having a conversation about my faith. How do I articulate 2,000 years worth of history? And how do I speak about my faith in a way that people can understand and get? I found myself frustrated, thinking, what do I say? Where do I begin? Um, but then it hit me. We have, a, we have one of two creeds that we recite at mass daily, which articulates what we believe. And I think if we just commit that to memory and draw upon that when we're having conversations with people, I think we can articulate better what we believe. Greetings. Welcome to Catholic Facts. My name is Lee, and today we're going to be looking at the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed. The reason why we're looking at these two creeds today is because this is what we believe. So today I'm going to be using the Catechism of the Catholic Church as a reference, and there's also going to be some extra references in there for further reading. So without further ado, let's take a look at what the Catechism says about these creeds. So here I have my Catechism of the Catholic Church. This is the CTS Definitive and Complete Edition, albeit the Catechism got updated, I think, a couple of years ago now. So if you want a full, uh, complete, up-to-date Catechism at all times, visit the Vatican website. Um, I'll leave a link in the description. You can utilize that to your heart's content. There's loads of other resources on there as well, which is fantastic. So, Catechism of the Catholic Church, I'm going to be focusing primarily from paragraphs 193 up to 197, and then finishing with the two creeds. So without further ado, let's look at what the Church teaches in the Catechism of the Catholic Church um, from paragraphs 193 up to 197. None of the creeds from the different stages in the church's life can be considered superseded or irrelevant. They help us today to attain and deepen the faith of all times by means of the different summaries made of it. Among all the creeds, two occupy a special place in the church's life. The Apostles' Creed is so called because it is rightly considered to be a faithful summary of the Apostles' faith. It is the ancient baptismal symbol of the Church of Rome. Its great authority arises from this fact. It is the creed of the Roman Church, the see of Peter, the first of the apostles, to which he brought the common faith. The Niceno-Constantinopolitan, or Nicene Creed, draws its great authority from the fact that it stems from the first two ecumenical councils in 325 and 381. It remains common to all the great churches of both East and West to this day. Our presentation of the faith will follow the Apostles' Creed, which constitutes, as it were, the oldest Roman catechism. The presentation will be completed, however, by constant references to the Nicene Creed, which is often more explicit and more detailed. As on the day of our baptism, when our whole life was entrusted to the standard of teaching, let us embrace the creed of our life-giving faith. To say the credo with faith is to enter into communion with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and also with the whole church which transmits the faith to us in whose midst we believe. This creed is the spiritual seal, our heart's meditation, and an ever-present guardian. It is unquestionably the treasure of our soul. So now let us look at the two creeds, the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now we're going to look at the Nicene Creed, which, as Catechism 196 details, that it is more explicit and more detailed version of the Apostles' Creed. So here we go. The Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So there we have it, the two creeds, the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed. I think those of us who go to Mass regularly, I think we, can, we know the creed off by heart. The problem is, is that we need to be thinking of the creed whenever we're having conversations with people and then being able to articulate those key bullet points two individuals my recommendation focus more on the apostles creed i think it's a little bit more easier to digest for those people who don't understand our faith and then you can use the nicene creed to answer any questions that they have those are my recommendations i'm curious as to what your recommendations might be and i think that would be a benefit if we can all share in the comments how we would articulate our faith to people either using the creed or using elements of the creed, or if you have another method maybe, feel free to sound off in the comments below. And if you need further reading, please check the references that I've enclosed with the video footage. So I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and I hope it's been a little bit informative by what the church teaches in regards to the creeds. And hopefully this has given you an idea on how you can share your faith and speak to friends, family and strangers alike. So thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe, comment, like, all that good stuff. I think I want to try and invent a word for all of that. So I find it a little bit cheesy to be saying that every single time a video comes on. So if I can come up with a word, I'll try and use it so that we can all understand what it is that I mean when I say about subscribing, liking, etc. And please feel free to follow me on all the socials. I'm looking to release an episode like this every week, uh, as well as throughout the week, just sprinkling some shorts or whatever. Um, thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Please continue to pray for me as I will pray for all of you. Thank you and God bless.